Hello everybody, welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 and this is going to be my very first series playing through a mod unlike anything you've probably ever seen before. I'm really excited about this. Some of you are familiar with this mod, it's called the New Order. It is a complete reworking of Hearts of Iron 4. It uses the same engine, but it's completely different than anything I've ever played before. It's very story driven. Uh, decisions feel much more like you're in the middle of history being made rather than just a series of mouse clicks during a game. Uh, the big question I'm dealing with right now is who do I choose to play as? And I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the United States uh, just because they're one of the few countries that's largely untouched in this world. This is a world in which uh, the Third Reich, uh, the Axis powers won World War II. And so you see the aftermath of that. You see that the Soviet Union is completely broken up into a series of smaller nations. You see China's broken up. Uh, Japan and Germany are intact. The United States is in intact. Canada and Mexico are intact. Most of the Western Hemisphere largely intact. But take a look here at Europe, uh, the Kingdom of England. You've got Wales, Cornwall, Republic of Scotland. You've got Ulster uh, and the Republic of Ireland. France has been broken up into Brittany, the French state, and then Burgundy right here. Uh, Italy has gobbled up, uh, and in fact, they've actually dammed up part of the uh, Adriatic Sea, and you can see that there's additional land that's been created because of it. Just a very different world that we're in. So I'm excited to dive into this one. I'm excited to see what you think of it as well. So let's get started. So here's the background. World War II has been over for 20 years. It's 1962, but the legacy still lives on. The German Reich reigned supreme from the Atlantic Sea to the once great city of Moscow, reigning, uh, ruling Europe with an iron fist. Thousands live and die every day under German tyranny, yearning for a freedom that may never come. But all is not well in the Reich. Hitler lays on his deathbed even as the first German Ramsonat uh, lands on the moon and already the vultures pick at his corpse. Albert Speer, Martin Bormann, Hermann Goering, and Reinhard Heydrich each prepare to take power in the Reich, and the world waits with bated breath for the storm that is surely coming. Outside of the Reichstag, in the megacity of Germania, uh, per partisans prepare for their final struggle, and Heinrich Himmler plots to bring the world to the edge from his Spartanist utopia in the Ordenstadt of Burgundy. Across the seas, the United States gathers allies to prevent the fall of democracy in the world, struggling to contain its own politics long enough to tear up the treaties that have ended the Second World War. In Asia, the Japanese Empire groans under the weight of rivals within as well as without, as a hundred different cultures struggle to begin the co uh, to cooperate in the goal of finally overthrowing their slaveholder. In the Mediterranean, an old alliance feuds with itself. A reformer in Italy seeks to create a hotbed of democracy in Europe, as well as, as an aging Franco fights to keep control of Iberia. Russia is shattered, and dozens of warlords scrabble to pick up the pieces of a broken nation and restore what Bukharin lost. The world teeters in a careful balance. Will it survive to see a new millennium, or is this the beginning of the end? Okay, here we go. Like I said, this is very story driven. So uh, be prepared for a lot of <laughs> a lot of reading, a lot of background, a lot of history here uh, so that we can really immerse ourselves into the world that we're a part of. Years ago, before the talk of the not, uh, Nazi, uh, Nazi jackboot and the Japanese tyranny of the Isles, the Stars and Stripes flew high and mightily above the likeness of a different worldwide sickness, that of excesses of the Roaring Twenties, the explosion of Wall Street crash, and the dread of the Great Depression that journeyed forth, wreaking havoc upon a America. It was here that the ideas of the Rooseveltian New Deal burned. As comparisons to the failures of the Soviets Nikolai Bukharin's own doings left the ideas unpopular and unsupported. And it was here that Al Smith came on top for the Democrats, allowing for then incumbent President Herbert Hoover to maintain his stay in the White House. With 1936, however, things changed for the United States. Joseph P. Kennedy promised an administration of balance and isolation, seeking to tiptoe away from the breaking out of war in Europe by the Nazi. Despite the constant pleas from Allied states, peace and abstainment reigned in North America, allowing the country to maneuver a recovery from the Great Depression and bolster the American economy. However, calm and stability hath reigned not for on... December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by the naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan, crippling the United States fleet as it rested in Pearl Harbor. 
With the Navy on the retreat and a new president to take hold, President Truman promised the American people that they would see the beacon of liberty push through for the cause of democracy, a promise which sunk to the depths of the Pacific on July 4, 1945, as a flash of light consumed the island of Hawaii upon the dropping of an atomic bomb on the previously attacked Pearl Harbor. To make matters worse, late August saw the signing of the Akagi Accords, officially ending the war with the first great American defeat in history, as it signed away the state of Hawaii and the naval bases of Los Angeles and San Francisco to Japanese control. Really? Okay, I guess we must have got them back. Um, alongside the endless amounts of reparations to pay for the lifting of embargoes to Axis allied, uh, allied states. The chaotic, chaotic 1948 election saw Thomas Dewey signed uh, Trump the embarrassed Democrats over a reeling nation, having to deal with the planting of seeds toward the new political path of the United States. In the first post-war election, an angry and bitter American populace almost unanimously turned their backs on the ruling Democratic Party. Facing waves of defections to the Republicans and the loss of nearly all their Senate seats, the party desperately sought a way to survive. Ultimately, a radical solution was proposed by several former Democrats turned Republicans, such as Senator Lyndon B. Johnson, a union with the now triumphant Republican Party. After much political wrangling, the two parties were united to form the Republican Democratic Party, briefly turning America into a one-party state. Thus, the legendary Dwight D. Eisenhower, famed for his bold defense along the English line against the Nazis, won election as the first president under Republican Democrats. Eisenhower worked hard in creating an organization of free nations. This is really long, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, in the 1960s, Richard Nixon and Vice President John F. Kennedy, the son of former President Joseph P. Kennedy, find themselves at the helms of the White House. Uh, so we're going to scroll down. I'll just let you, if you want to pause and read all of this for yourself, you can. George Patton formed the uh, Patriotic Party in 1951, so he survived. Uh, where we're at now. The year is 1962. Richard Nixon is president of the United States. Fortunately, his work is cut out for, it should be unfortunately, I guess. Americans from coast to coast desire social reform at all levels. A new crisis is brewing in enemy-controlled Hawaii as the aggressive Japanese place nuclear missiles on the island chain. Racism runs rampant across the South as African Americans plead for the Civil Rights Act to be signed, while many white Southerners fiercely oppose the act. The Cold War between us, Germany, and the Empire of Japan is starting to heat up again, and it's President Nixon's job to bring his country to its rightful place on the world stage. All right. So that's a lot, and uh, we're going to just kind of take a look at a few things here so we can kind of understand what's going on. So a couple things about the mechanics here. Uh, your gross domestic product needs to be balanced with your debt. Every year, interest on your debt will be deducted as an expense. Ending up with too high of a debt to GDP ratio can spell financial ruin, so we have to balance the economy. Uh, keep a watchful eye on your income and expenditures. Balance is key. Reckless expenditure can swiftly lead to high levels of debt. So we've got to avoid debt, obviously. Overhauled war. Players lead a military of the Cold War. Units have been nearly completely overhauled from Hearts of Iron 4. Helicopters and air cavalry, uh, things like that. We have modern aircraft carriers and stealth ships that control the seas. Obviously, mutually assured destruction is an issue with nuclear war uh, being a concern. Uh, when World War III is fought, it cannot end well. Uh, proxy wars, okay. Proxy wars just like in real life. Uh, so think uh, Vietnam, where you have the communist powers helping North Vietnam and democracies helping South Vietnam, or, or the Korean War, same deal. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this game and take a look at where we're at. So here's the political landscape. Uh, we do have some decisions that can be made. Republicans and Democrats are currently voting together. We have 45 Republicans, 40 Democrats in the Senate, so it's an overwhelming majority. There are also 13 national progressive senators, so we have more than 100 senators. So we have more than 100 or more than 50 states now. It doesn't look like it. It looks like we have all the same states as before. Uh, and of course, we don't have Hawaii. We do have Alaska still. But Hawaii is part of Japan. And we've got fleets surrounding Hawaii at the moment. So that's pretty interesting. The USS Gettysburg is a carrier. I'm just kind of looking at all of this here. Yeah, we've got a massive 
Pacific fleet surrounding Hawaii at the moment, but it looks like they're kind of headed for Australia. Let's go ahead and take a look at research uh, and see where we're at. I guess green means we already have it, blue means it's available, and red means it's not uh, available for selection right now. Now this interface takes some getting used to because it looks very different. And for me personally, it's not as graphically pleasing. Uh, I get that they're trying a complete overhaul and they're kind of doing the uh, futuristic type thing. I'm just not a huge fan of how it all looks. But, you know, that's something you get used to, I guess. Uh, so I'm looking at what we have available for research. We're in 1962, so um, let's go with improved fire control system here. I'm looking for things that will form the basis of my economy rather than just the military right now. So there's a few things I can do. Batch production materials, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, that's mutually exclusive with the other tree, which has already been chosen. Military construction two, is it, that's another one that's gonna be mutually exclusive, I would guess. Oil processing. And then let's go ahead and look at our infantry. Infantry weapon improvements, six. All right, let's do that. All right, we've got free civilian factories available to us, so we've got to look at what we want to do in terms of our civilian factories. I think I'm going to build up a few more civilian factories, see if we can just boost this economy a lot more. Free military factories. Yeah, this is definitely going to take some, some getting used to. National focus. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. There's a lot here. The Nixon presidency is where we are right now. So I would imagine we'll get a new focus tree if we end up with a different president. Uh, I'm trying to look at the civil rights issues because that's something I definitely want to deal with. Uh, we could go the middle line, which is what Nixon's been doing. And I don't know if these other ones are even available to me. They're not. So we're going to need a different president uh, to be able to do that. Doesn't look like I can even choose those policies right now. All right, containment theory. Smashing the crested wave. Boy, there's a lot here. I feel like for now I might want to go isolationist. But I think that might be a decision I leave to you, the viewer, uh, in the form of our war cabinet. If you are familiar at all with my playthrough of End of a New Beginning as Germany, you know, that's something I've done now is I've started inter integrating our patrons uh, as a war cabinet to help me make major decisions about the game. I'll do that again in this one, uh, and I will at some point throw out that question at the end of this episode. So there's really nothing I can choose right now because Nixon has already made certain choices. Uh, so I think right now we're at the place where we can choose one of these, either cracking the steel curtain or smashing the crested wave. So I think we're going to go with cracking the steel curtain, which is about the, that's the only choice I have right now is between those two. Uh, free dockyard, so we can build up our navy a little bit here. I'm going to go with some Kitty Hawk class aircraft carriers. How many free dockyards do we have? 23. So, all right, let's go with an Iowa class battleship. Can we? Oh, we're missing modules for this? Interesting. I wonder if we can create a variant for it then. So this is pretty cool. You've got a lot of really neat modules available in the naval design here. So I could go anti-air missiles. Uh, we've got a 1980 SAM battery. I don't think that's available right now, is it? On a 1960 SAM battery. We've got one other place right here, anti-ship missiles. Ship to ship. Very cool. Oh, I have no experience points to spend, so I can't do that. They don't have battery. Okay, so we, we have to either research or build those. Uh, so for now, I guess, we're going to go with... an Albany class... It's going to take a while to build those. USS Atlanta, sweet. I've still got 23 available, so I've got three left here. 
Build another Albany class, I guess. Oh, no, Worcester class. How about that? USS Juno. All right. We have no divisions in basic training, so let's build up our military a little bit. How about an armored division? We'll just start with one for now. Eh, maybe we'll do more than one. Where's the button for more than one? There we go. Just do it that way, I guess. Not entirely sure where the duplicate button is on here. It's just so very different than what I'm used to. So I guess for now, I'll just do an armor division and infantry division to start, and we'll kind of see where we're at in terms of what we have. We've obviously, obviously got to sort our army into armies. See who we've got available for. Oh, Maxwell Taylor, who commanded the 101st Airborne. Um, yeah, that works. We'll put General Taylor in there. We'll get everybody sorted into armies, but let's go ahead and start playing and start getting the decisions going here that are going to shape our world moving forward. All right, the end of the missile crisis. For the past several weeks, the United States has been embroiled in a crisis with Japan. So that's why we were surrounding Hawaii. It's kind of our version of the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's just the Hawaiian Missile Crisis. After a tense standoff between the U.S. Navy, First Fleet, and the Imperial Japanese Navy, Vice President Kennedy approached the Empire with an offer. The United States would remove its own MRBMs from Australia in return for the Japanese doing the same in Hawaii. So it's exactly... Uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis, just with different territory. Uh, so we've gone ahead and pulled our, our Navy back. Uh, I guess that's why they moved back from where they were. Let's get a look at our economy now. Here's our GDP, annual GDP growth. There's the debt. Uh, so we've got to look at, right now, our deficit's about a minus $105 million. It's not bad, really. Uh, German moon landing. Germany today proudly announced to the world that the German... Uh, was the first ever to step on the moon. Uh, Eberhard Kölner, using a rocket based on the A9, A10 design from World War II, and as a member of the team led by acclaimed scientist Werner von Braun, successfully landed along with the team predominantly made up of former Luftwaffe pilots. Um, let's take a look now. Assassin strikes at Hitler. News from Germany today is sporadic at best. CIA assets in Germania. Have reported that shortly after celebrations over the moon landing began to settle, German military units and several platoons worth of German dictators' various bodyguard units filled the streets and immediately put the city under martial law. Uh, they attempted to kill him, but it was stopped by one of Hitler's personally personal bodyguards and killed on the spot. Interesting. Stellar dreams. So this is about John Glenn. Uh, Jonas James, have you heard the news? Glenn rubbed the sleep out of his eyes and replied, James Edward Webb, I have not even gotten out of bed yet. Be more specific. They're defunding NASA. Not cool. Some men still dream. I don't want to defund NASA. Not something we need to keep alive, especially in these times. Um, anyway, so let's take a look. We were looking at the economy. We've got a slight debt. Now, there are certain things we could do to fix that. Uh, we could reduce military spending which is certainly going to hurt things. I think for now we'll kind of let that be. Production we've already looked at a little bit. Construction as well. Uh, trade, I think for the most part, is going to go automatic. All right, politics. The United States is once again gearing up for an election season. So one-third of the Senate seats is the Senate Class 3. If you're not familiar with American politics... Uh, in real life, we have 100 senators, and about a third of those are up for re-election each time. So you have 33, 33, and then 34. That way, every two years, a third of the Senate is being re-elected. Now, there's special elections and things like that, but for the most part, that's how it works. Uh, so we're going to start kind of pushing our country in a particular direction. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure which way we want to go. I do like the idea of electing someone new. Uh, for the presidential election, but I think we'll keep the Republicans and Democrats in power in the Senate. Hitler named Heydrich his successor. So Reinhard Heydrich in real life was actually assassinated during World War II, I think, in Czechoslovakia. He was kind of the the architect of the final solution. He was kind of the, the man behind the plan for the concentration camps, uh, the extermination camps, I should say. Uh, so it looks like he's the man that they've chosen. 
Uh, so I'm so crazy, I plan to vote Eisenhower again this November. Interesting. Protest in Birmingham. Uh, I keep saying Birmingham. That's in England. Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, we've got to deal with the racial issues. That was kind of the major um, domestic issue going on in 1962. There's Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech, I Have a Dream. So that national focus has been completed, as has cracking the steel curtain. Now, we've got the Forgotten Allies. First Fallen Domino. See, this is where I want to be. I want to try and unlock some resistance over in Europe, I think. Um, the South African plan over here. So let's do that. So apparently here's the thought process behind cracking Fortress Europe. Uh, where the Japanese and Americans had only recently escaped Armageddon's embrace in Hawaii, the Nazi empire was fraying at its seams. Uh, so Secretary of Defense Melvin Laird, Melvin Laird looked up at the latest CIA intelligence brief on the German Reich. It's a house of cards, Mr. President. Britain chafes under a foreign occupier. Brittany already deals with us in secret. And the Norwegians continue to resist decades of occupation. And their African colonies will wither on the vine without support. Uh, so it's the opportunity of a lifetime. We will never get another shot at crippling the Nazis like this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start kind of doing a Cold War thing where we have proxies that are fighting our wars for us without directly getting involved in a hot war ourselves. Oh boy, John Glenn stood before an assembled mass of scientists, engineers, science enthusiasts, and journalists. He had already spoken with a few people and shared in their frustration at NASA's situation, talked about his experiences as an astronaut, and even signed a couple autographs. Now he needed to make a big splash. So he said, by ending our involvement in space, President Nixon has given up. He has accepted stagnation and decline, abandoning the stars to the fascist powers. So he called him out. So I wonder if, uh, as he drove home, he recalled that Ohio's governorship was up for election in a few months. It was also uh, almost a crazy thought. And yet, so um, John Glenn did end up getting elected as a senator here in Ohio. Uh, when I was a teenager, he was... You know, I was a kid and a teenager. It was John Glenn and Howard Metzenbaum. They were our senators. But um, interesting to see what happens with all of that. A house divided. Boy, I hope we don't end up in a civil war here in the U.S. with this. Uh, though the institution of slavery was torn down at the end of the Civil War by the 13th Amendment, a failed reconstruction, and that's an understatement, uh, and decades of Jim Crow ensured that the issues of race would not or could not be solved. Uh, so that... The party splits. There we go. Okay. So we're back to Democrats and Republicans with all of that happening. No national focus set. Helping out a friend. Um, the first fallen domino. All right. Norwegian resistance will be unlocked. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got free civilian factories available here. Nuclear reactors. Yeah, let's build a few of those. Look at the economy. National debt's $130 billion U.S. dollars. Um, where is our deficit right now? Actually, we have a revenue of 70 Okay, awesome. Oh, no, our deficit's minus $500 million. That's actually really not that bad. It's more than it was, though. Um, increase this construction budget, decrease liquid reserves. Oh, boy. These are tough decisions. I'll have to think about a little bit. All right. Diplomatic alert. So it looks like there's a, a win and a war there. We've got some research that's been finished. Um, the other America. So this is just a novel that's been published. What's going on here? Violence is getting worse. Nixon being a stick in the mud about it isn't helping things either. He still won't endorse any legislation on the matter. Can't you do something about it? Uh, so it looks like... Is John F. Kennedy going to run against Nixon uh, for the presidency in 64? It looks like that may be where that's headed. Right now we're just going to continue doing some basic research on some things. Yeah, I'm really curious to see politically where we're headed. 
now that we've got a multi-party system again. All right, let's take a look. The Senate is controlled by the Republican Democrat Party. But see, that's going the way of the dodo here. So um, we can see Howard Metzenbaum, John Ashbrook uh, are from Ohio. We've got Schaefer and Schweiker. I'm just kind of curious to see Lyndon Johnson, John Tower down here. So down here in the South, we've got a RD, but he's a Republican, Lyndon Johnson. So um, we can actually see how some of those folks are starting to break away so those two actually became republicans as well so i guess after the new elections is when we're going to see separate republicans and democrats so this map's going to look very very different at that point oh an assassination attempt on king edward the eighth the assassin believed to be a radical member oh let's pause here of the organization hmmlr attempted to throw a grenade at the monarch in the middle of the speech I remember seeing that when we kind of did a first look of this game. Yeah, we're about to see some major blowing up in our country over the segregation and racial issues that desperately need to be dealt with and aren't being dealt with by the current administration. I'm going to queue up some more civilian factories. The first fallen domino. All right. We're going to expand business ties in South Africa, which is, oh, we don't meet the requirements. Can't do anything there either. Oh, that's because we went this way. That's right. Open the black market. We can buy and funnel guns to the Norwegians. Ooh, that'll be fun. William Rogers sits silently on a large, ugly couch. And I tell you what, just the intention to detail in this game is really cool. Um, intentionally listening intently listening to the daily news morning the recent passing of the national security act has allowed the guyanese government to seize hundreds of critics and political agitators as well as executing dozens dozens more uh, so this is happening down in guiana i guess that would be what down here yep so looks like something serious is happening No one needs to speak to the press. No one speaks to the press. Not yet. Not to the press secretary. Not me. Not any of you. Not a word until we figure out our next step. Understand? Okay. So now we have a meeting to deal with this issue. With hap what's happening down in Guyana. We can't allow any kind of presence of anti-democracy forces in the Western Hemisphere. Um... So we're going to tell him to repeal the act or else. I'm looking now at decisions I might be able to make. Contact the Norwegian resistance. Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll see what happens. Okay, we've opened the black market. Let's integrate the support. Oh, we can't do that until we do these other ones here. So helping out a friend is next. Uh, looking at the political landscape, Nixon still leads the largest ideology with 35%. JFK is next with 28%. 19% uh, here, 17% here. So pretty fractured all along. Also, we can look at the DEFCON map, and this kind of shows us where world tension is uh, and what are the main causes of that world tension. All right, looks like we were able to diffuse the issue down in Guyana. That's good news. You can sort these by crisis, uh, by severity. Obviously, the Hawaiian Missile Crisis was the main cause of world tension right now. Uh, some smaller ones here. Memories of the West Russian War, growing chaos in Germany, all contributing to world tension.
We get these CIA reports, which is really super cool. I love this. It really makes you feel like you are involved in the decision-making process of the nation. South Africa is our only ally right now in the world. Uh, so we're kind of getting these reports. I'm not going to read the whole thing uh, to you. I have read it on my own. Uh, but this just lets us know where things stand. Uh, obviously, the Union of South Africa might be uh, a place for us to launch something to put pressure on the Germans because the Germans control everything that borders South Africa. Um, and we do have a war going on here between the Order of St. George uh, and the Berezin, Beren, Berezniki. It might be really interesting to play as one of these little Russian warlords sometime in this game. But right now we're looking at Nor uh, Norway as a place to kind of crack the Third Reich. All right, we completed helping out a friend. We're going to break open the caches now. Collapse of the Triumvirate. In the wake of the bombing of the Triumvirate Conference in Malta, it would appear as though whatever chances the Fragile Alliance had went down in flames. The incident providing, uh, proving to be the final straw for many. Um, so I don't know who was in the Triumvirate, but uh, Italy, Syria, Turkey. So here we're going to break open the caches, send weapons caches to the resistance, and new decisions to support them will be unlocked. Awesome. So this is where we're kind of fighting the Cold War right now, is with the resistance here in Norway. Be interesting to see how that all unfolds as we move along. I'm going to start trying to build up uh, some army experience as best I can. Okay, so the Japanese do still control these ports, Los Angeles and San Francisco. Blackmail in the White House. Staffer had enough wits about him to immediately re uh, reseal the envelope, call the FBI, and pass it on to them. In under an hour, it was on J. Edgar Hoover's desk. Uh, so what is it about? Unless you want this on the front page of the post next week, contact me and we'll talk. Uh, okay, so this is going to be about Nixon basically doing Nixon things, but just doing them in 1962 instead of in the 1970s. All right, we've got war in the desert. Let's take a look and see what's going on with that. We've gone to DEFCON 4 because of it. The second Italo-Turkish war. So it's between uh, the governor of the Levant. So I guess the Levant, I mean, that's what, Syria, that area. Yep. Syria, Israel, Gaza. Jordan. Actually, Syria is up here, so Syria is part of Turkey. So there's another decision we can make here, and that's to improve relations with the HMMLR. I think that's who tried to assassinate Edward VIII. Now, Edward VIII, um, he was king for, in his history, he was king only for most of 1936 before he famously stepped down in favor of his brother, the Duke of York, who became King George VI uh, because he wanted to marry his uh, girlfriend who was a twice-divorced American. Uh, so Edward VIII, uh, however, uh, who became the, um, what was he, the Duke of Windsor after that, was very famously kind of pro-Germany and was very buddy-buddy with Hitler. So in this timeline, we've got a pro-German Edward VIII, so it makes sense that we would probably want to support someone who's opposed to him. So let's go ahead and improve those relations. Okay. So uh, let's take a look and see. This is important, I think. National Security Council has been gathered by order of the President and by recommendation of Treasury Secretary McNamara. Now, Bob, you've told me this isn't just about the Madagascar blockade. It better not be. I uh, said the director of CIA uh, asked me to have you convene the council. Mr. President, we have contacts high up within the German colonial administration in Madagascar. So we're talking about down here. Uh, German colonies. We have total reason to believe that they have some misgivings about their loyalties to Berlin. With the weakening of the German Empire and with Hitler becoming increasingly ill, it's become apparent that a conflict may break out on the island sooner rather than later. Uh, so we have a direct, uh, we have a, an ability here to cause some more problems for the Germans. Uh, seems like something we would definitely want to take part in. 
So let's look for opportunities to do that. I don't think we have... Oh, smuggle the English weapons. So when we get 50 uh, political power, we can smuggle weapons to the English resistance. That's cool. So we're going to be supporting resistance all over the place is kind of the goal right now. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be at war with Guyana after all. So things did not happen the way we wanted them to. It was not until Ambassador Spencer King returned to the American Embassy that he learned of what had transpired, and a jury-rigged chain of communication managed to put him back in touch with Washington. Nixon called an emergency meeting with the Joint Chiefs, and one conclusion was reached. This shall not stand. Uh, so it looks like there was a coup. So we are now at war in Guyana. So we're going to have to send the military down there to deal with that. Not sure the best way to go about that or how I can control these forces. I might have to... coordinate my Navy to do this. All right, let's start taking a look at our Navy. We've got Third Fleet right here. David McDonald it is. So what we've got to do now is we've got to establish supremacy. over an area between where we are and where we want to be. Once we do that, then we can probably go ahead and launch a military invasion. There we go. We've got it. We've got air wings that we can get involved in this. I'm not going to worry about that yet. I think our army should have more than enough to get this done. So naval invasion order. Let's go from North Carolina. We're going to land them in Guyana right at the capital. Let's see if we've got 16 divisions. Excellent. That's what we need. This will take some time. Once they get there, though, I think they'll probably load up pretty fast. All right, interesting. Burgundy has developed a nuclear weapon, and I think that's the country that's currently controlled by Heinrich Himmler. Uh, let's take a look and see if we can confirm that. I'm pretty sure that's who it is. Yep, that's him. Interesting. So now there's another nuclear power in Europe. We're waiting for our invasion to get going. I, I'm giving them the orders to do that, but I think maybe they're still preparing it. Is what's happening here? I can't remember how that all works. Oh, we actually have to have naval supremacy in the Caribbean Sea because that it's going to go that way to get there. So that's our issue right now is we haven't established enough supremacy. There we go. That'll solve that problem. A note from Russia. Eh, nothing really major right now. All right, now... Can we go ahead and launch this attack? Oh, we got to prepare for 56 days. We keep increasing our black market arms trade. So at some point, that's going to have an effect. We're very nearly done with all of this focus tree. We're working on the South African side of it now. We're going to expand business ties. If the Boers and Germans want to fight, we won't make it easy for them. Yeah, that's what we're, we're kind of working toward is war in Africa. The death of a Supreme Court justice. Let me fill this vacancy. Well, there's something that we're talking about in history right now, huh? Do we actually get to do that? Here's all of our decisions that we can currently make. Smuggle the English lots of weapons. I like that. Let's smuggle the English lots of weapons, shall we? All right, we're 13, 12 days away now from being able to launch our invasion into Guyana. Italy wins the Italo-Turkish War. Peace in the Middle East, huh? All right. Uh, we've got some research to do here. Let's look at our naval research. Wyoming-class battleship. Interesting. Resume battleship development. Yes, please.
All right, we're just one day away now. This invasion will be able to take off, and here we go. So we're going to be invading Guyana. I don't imagine it'll take very long. 16 American divisions ought to be able to make really quick work of these guys. While we're waiting for that to happen, we're about to have our elections, and we're going to see the new landscape uh, of politics. You can see when this game sims, it freezes up pretty regularly, uh, even on a pretty good system. It definitely takes a while to sim through on this game. It's a pretty pretty taxing mod on your system. Good afternoon. Uh, Dick J. Edgar Hoover uh, said as he stepped into the Oval Office, quietly shutting the door behind him. Nixon furrowed his brow and replied, I told you not to call me that. You tell me lots of things, Mr. President. <laughs> um, FBI's investigation of the origin of blackmailers had seen little success. Um, burn it all. Do it. All right, here come our divisions. Class 3 Senate elections. The people have spoken. New senators have been elected. And we'll deal with that. But right now, we've got to deal with our invasion into South America. We're about to take his headquarters, or his uh, capital city. Choosing our SCOTUS nominee. Here we go. Ah, oh, boy. Conservative it is. Boy, it's taken a little longer for our 16 divisions to win this than I thought it would. All right, national focus, commitment to African democ democracy. So here are the changes that happened in the uh, race. The Republicans lost two, the Democrats lost one. The NPP far right gained all three of those seats. Uh, so not a huge change, but I imagine the future elections are going to be much more significant. So what we'll do is we'll finish up this war with Guyana. And once that's complete, I think we'll wrap up this episode because a lot has happened. But we are just getting started. Yesterday, German fighters based out of northern England nearly shot down a CIA U-2C piloted by Lieutenant Francis Gary Powers. So again, uh, our parallel universe is very closely mirroring what happened in real life, which uh, that U-2 really was shot down, and it really was Francis Gary Powers. It just wasn't over England. Uh, so that's pretty cool to kind of see those things happening. We're having a really rough time landing our troops in Guyana. Um, trying to get our air wings to support. And I think what I want to do here is I want to, let's see, let's get air superiority down here. See if that helps at all. Yeah, it looks like it did. It immediately uh, gave us victory. So uh, now we've got to go ahead and make our plans to conquer the rest. In fact, I don't even really need to give them plans like this. I'll just do this myself. I'm not sure why we have so few divisions landed. Did we win already? Yep, I guess so. So the United States of America has defeated Guyana in an American policing action. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So just like that, we dealt with them. Uh, now we've got to pull our troops out. Uh, we're going to protect our interests. And it looks like we're going to add naval bases and air bases uh, down in South Africa. So it's December 24th, 1962. We're going to wrap it up right there. Let me know your thoughts uh, about what's going on in the world. Uh, I really don't have... Um, a specific decision to throw to the council uh, just because there's not really anything as far as the national tree uh, focus tree that's a major decision that I need to choose between uh, just because we're already kind of locked in uh, because of the decisions that uh, Nixon had previously made that doesn't necessarily allow me a lot of freedom and choices it does look like we actually can choose between the Kennedy plan or crack down on the movement. So maybe that's what we'll do. And I think I feel like I know where this is headed. Um, 
So I'm not going to actually pose that question because I think I'm probably going to go to Kennedy plan. Um, we will definitely have some decisions to make once we have a new president and we get a new focus tree that will be completely kind of a blank slate and we can decide for ourselves. So what I'll do is I'm going to post over on Patreon just kind of a generic question uh, asking for input from the council. And everyone who's, I think, at the first lieutenant rank on up on Patreon can have a say in that. But you can also leave your comments here on uh, the video here. But if the council has kind of an overwhelming sentiment uh, about a direction I should go, I certainly will follow that. So drop a like if you would. Leave uh, your comments, and we will see you again in a few days with another episode. Thanks for watching.